What does this tell me if he just played both curved spine, scaly spoon, and has five cards left in his deck to draw before his deck resets. Well, they're not there anymore. He's not gonna redraw these. What's going on Axie fam? Elijah here back with another video. And today I have one I'm very excited about that's gonna explore one of the newer mechanics added into Origin, which is the ability to retain a card by spending an energy and thus drawing it in the following round. As we can see here, Meditate's making a presence on the leaderboard, Ryan, hit rank one just the other day. He can't play right now. His game is bugged for some reason. We're hoping it gets fixed soon, but make sure you subscribe to Ryan. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. Also subscribe to the Meditate YouTube channel where we're putting out tons of origin content to keep you up to speed on the newest and most powerful metas. I'm gonna be putting content out there. Ryan is pumping it out and we're probably gonna even get 1437 to make a debut there very soon as well. So subscribe to Meditate. First things first, I'm gonna do a quick update on the bird comp I'm using. My last video was on birds and how strong they are right now. The adjustments I've made since then is I no longer have a plant up front, but I have switched it out for another bird that kind of looks like a plant, but has eggshell and blackmail on it. And I think this is the biggest change that I made that if you're maybe looking to take your team to the next level, ensuring that you have three pigeon posts to put max pressure on their back liner and also have the most card manipulation as it clogs up their hand every time you play it by giving them a blackmail is a really critical component to take this to the highest level. But if you're still climbing up the rank, using a plant, it's all good. I do think though that Clover is really important here as you have so much taunt and you can safely play Clover a lot of the time and start stacking leaves to heal yourself. Carrot's obviously a super good card, so I have that there too. Aside from that, I did switch out my backliner and instead of Cottontail, I now have Swallow, which we're gonna get to see right here in this example how powerful this is. It destroys up to 120 of the target shield plus the 65 damage also goes through. This is insanely powerful powerful against sustained comps and tanky builds, which there's plenty of in the arena as well. And I hope that helps you with your own bird comp if you're looking to make some adjustments. And now this doesn't have to be perfectly matched. You can play around, tweak some things. Remember, we're probably gonna get some updates soon, so don't go crazy. This is just what I've done. So I've skipped ahead to the turn I wanna highlight in this game where I utilize the ability to retain a card at the cost of one energy. As you can see, we're in a 2v2 situation and I'm bringing some firepower this round. My Mavis has kicked in to make Curly cost zero energy, so I'm going to get to play potentially all four of these cards. We're up against a really nasty midline that's going to end up being my opponent's closer. Now, he's got two super high shield secret cards in Scaly Spoon and Indian Star. He also has Mosquito, which allows him to heal up. It's no easy task chopping this guy down, so I have to make sure I play my cards right. First things first, I've got to deal with this Aqua at the midline, so I'm going to play three damage cards to finish this off, including the pigeon post, which will throw a blackmail in my opponent's hand. Now here's the kicker. I've got one energy left. You might just be on autopilot and say, hey, I need to use all my energy, do as much damage as possible, and play the swallow into his mid lane. Now that would be a huge mistake in this scenario. Once again, Swallow is a shield destroyer. It helps immensely when your opponent brick walls and we wanna actually hang on to that this round as his reptile has no shield up right now, but is very likely to put a ton up in the following round. So I'm actually gonna use an energy to put this back into the top of my draw pile. As you can see, it's already gone into effect and I'll be making sure that I pull that one out in the next round. On to my opponent and sure enough, he got both Scaly Spoon and Indian Star. He's gonna get rid of the blackmail, play Sakura, which starts to uh, allow him to heal up and be even tankier, and throw up 164 shield. And on top of that, since Reflect stacks, this means that's 164 damage that I'm gonna be dealing back into my own face if I don't find a way around it. So now we're gonna to get to see that swallow mechanic come into play. It's gonna decimate this 164 shield and do some damage on top of it. Boom! And you might notice too that the only damage reflected back to me was the bit that was left over on his shield after the swallow power went through. So 120 acts as a magical ability, but the, I think 40 or so that he had left did reflect back 
but hey, I'm still alive, his shield is gone, and because I waited around to use this card, I got maximum utility out of it, I can follow up with little peas, which applies vulnerable, do heaps of damage. I'm also gonna egg my backliner here so that that's the one he has to focus on, making sure my mid lane stays super healthy to close out the match in the following round, and it's too little too late for him, a little mosquito action, he draws a bunch of revenge cards, and he's not really gonna have a way out. So he just surrenders, and we book the win. Next up, let's take a look at a game I played against Yu from Levox. He was a killer in V2 with really creative compositions, and here he's running a poison build, which is really strong right now. So I'm not gonna go into too big of a team breakdown. I'm probably gonna save this one for a future video and some variations you can use with a beast, especially if you manage to pull a nice rune like I have here in Reckless Hunter. I mostly wanna focus on the later stages and the places that I had to skip to ensure the win. So let's go ahead and pick up here around turn six. I managed to chew through his front lane fairly quickly, but we are definitely not home free yet. This team is gonna start stacking poison on me. It's got ways to gain energy in Kataro. It's got Tiny Turtle to stun my axes as well. He's got some waters here for healing up. And on top of all that, has some really powerful secrets that reflect damage and also apply bleed to me, which makes me take damage every time I play a card and that can obviously lead to a world of pain especially when I have all these poisons that continue to grow on my axes. So my opponent is going to start playing secrets. He puts two on his mid lane here and Kataro into my plant so he doesn't get any energy there because I was taunted so there's no way for it to attack multiple axes. Now this is the first example of a round where I have three energy to spend but I don't really have a good draw to do it considering he has such a high shield in front of me which leads me to my next point around retaining and that's that carrot is often one of the cards you want to do this with for one you only gain value if you're attacking and it causes HP loss to the target in this situation I have virtually no way to make that happen so I would just be playing carrots into nothing basically just wasting these really strong cards that could be a future use so instead I'm gonna throw the Rosa out there hopefully avoid the secrets that he played at the mid and instead hit his back lane now it's random where this is gonna go but I do end up getting a little lucky and I put his reptile on the back to sleep. So from there I can confidently play Mavis to start stacking up energy in the future round and that leaves me with one energy left which I spend to save the carrot for the following round where I can get way more value out of it. Back over to you and he is stone cold asleep. This is such a dead round for him. He can only play one revenge card, so that was a massive Rosa that we managed to get off in the previous round. Going into turn nine, I don't get the best draw. I actually pull a Confuse, and I get the free energy on the Carrot, so I'm not actually gonna get that much value out of it this round either, unfortunately, except for the fact that I will do some damage, which I wouldn't have even done in the previous round. So it was still worth it to retain it. We didn't get the max value we wanted, but definitely better than playing it for no reason in the previous turn. So I'm gonna go front now, play Axie Kiss, play basically everything I have in my hand, the Nutcracker, the Clover, and then the Free Carrot for a little chip damage to cap it off. I do have an extra energy left over, but no big deal. And we now put him down to 144 HP on his mid lane. Kataro ends up hitting two of my Axies, so he gets a free energy out of it. Green Thorns for more poison, that's gonna finish off my bird. And then two more secrets 142 shield at the mid and he goes ahead and plays his pure waters to try and buy some more time for himself and look at this I'm gonna start taking like 20 damage 19 damage across all my axes things are getting serious and while it looked like I was ahead earlier you can see how this comp can really start to turn things around with the amount of passive damage it puts on you I'm gonna play little piece first to get that vulnerable on him so that I can basically guarantee the kill with the extra damage He's gonna take 20% more from all these attacks. There's the carrot to stack me back up and I'm gonna get the kill with this final card being played in Scarab. And now we're in a 1v3 situation, but again, not home free. This thing can reflect big damage. He can shield up for you know tons of defense. As we can see here, he's up to 126. And again, I'm taking serious pain every single round. My beast just dropped below 100 health. I play Cactus here, it, look at that, drops me to 133. And then we saw two retains. I actually kept the two Nutcrackers. So this one perhaps is debatable, but the thing is, 
I have weak on my beast, so he's gonna be doing even less damage, which isn't gonna amount to a whole lot. So I thought maybe I could wait, hold on to those, and it might not seem like a lot, but I would be taking an extra 17 damage to my beast by breaking his shield here, given that Scaly Spoon reflects back half of it. And every bit of health matters right now. Like I said before, this thing is ticking away into oblivion. So because I'm not really gonna make such a big impact from attacking, I decided to just preserve myself to the max and be patient. I mean, at the end of the day, I got three axes that are still alive, so why rush the situation against this monster reflecting damage dealer when all I need to do is be patient and secure the win? He plays Scaly Spoon, Curved Spine, again, he redraws them, plus the revenge card, he goes up to almost 200 shield. But of course, I'm paying attention to that. I saw here in the top left, you know, you check the history. I'm always looking at what my opponent's playing. I saw that he played three secrets, all shield. And look at this, 24 damage, 30 damage, 16 damage. If I attack into 198 shield for one, one of my axes is gonna put, get bleed put onto them and the other ones are basically gonna kill themselves. So instead, I feel like even though I'm starting to be under pressure in terms of how many turns I have left, I decided that the best thing I can do is to play one pigeon post on my front line to clog his hand up a little bit in the next round and then go absolutely ham. And the final point I wanna make is the other thing you need to pay attention to is his draw pile. What does this tell me if he just played both Curved Spine, Scaly Spoon, and has five cards left in his deck to draw before his deck resets? Well, they're not there anymore. He's not gonna redraw these, meaning he's gonna be very, very minimal on shield in the next round, so if I can just wait it out, I'm probably gonna get the W. So instead, I decided to just play Mavis to have extra energy Pigeon Post, I'm hoping the Pigeon Post makes it less likely for him to draw Tiny Turtle. That's really why I decided to play that because I don't want him to chomp into my beast on the back line, which would you know, probably lose me the game. So here I'm praying he doesn't draw it. I play the Mavis. We're gonna have to see what it comes down to in terms of what he pulls. And there's no Tiny Turtle. Four cards, we've removed one by playing Blackmail. He throws up a Mavis, he doesn't have that many choices. He is gonna put Shield up, he is gonna chip away with some Revenge cards, but it's gonna come down to what I draw as well. Do I have a Killing Blow? We've been patient, patient, patient. I basically hard passed last round, aside from playing one card, and here we go. Little Peas, no damage reflect. I'm gonna get to play Nutcracker, Carrot, stack back up. I'm gonna play the Mavis because Ronin gains benefit from all the energy that you play. He's got vulnerable on him. Play the Ronin, 151 damage and we secure the kill. All three Axes still alive. But if I would have been impatient, if I would have rushed my moves there, I would have suicided with the poison, the bleed. And that just shows you that even though it's not the most orthodox thing, there's still room to pass in V3. There's still room to hold cards and use that retain mechanism. And this is just the beginning. There's gonna be so many more ways for us to learn how to use this mechanic and perhaps leave a comment below. Let me know how have you utilized the retain ability. I look forward to making future videos on how to find these little outplays and hold on to cards to get the maximum value out of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure that you subscribe to myself, Meditate, and Ryan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.